it, it, it was it was either this or Fifty Shades Freed. Pick your pick. Oh, those were our options. Hmm. Maybe I would have preferred Fifty Shades Freed. <laughs> Okay, we're here today to review Peter Rabbit, the new animated, chill, like Sony Animation Pictures film. That's like a live action animation hybrid sort of thing. Yeah. Where um Sam Gordon, I think is what the guy's name is, like he voices Peter Rabbit, this Mistress Rabbit, and all his rabbit friends who are voiced by like Margot Robbie, Daisy Ridley, uh, um, Sia is in this movie too, <laughs> and um, Rose Byrne who plays the human lady, and some other guy who plays the villain in this film. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like basically, um, it's based, it's based off of a children's book, right? A very popular children's book called The Tale of Peter Rabbit, and like Rose Byrne plays and plays Bea, who like Beatrix Potter, I think is what Beatrice, Beatrice Potter, Beatrix who, Potter, yeah, who wrote and illustrated the cat, uh, Peter Rabbit books. Like, yeah, she's the character, and she does a lot of painting in her countryside. And then, like, um, their their neighbor, Mister McGregor, he hates rabbits, but he wants to. He falls in love with Rose Byrne, so of course the rabbits want to like take their plan okay, back. Okay, and for those of you who know the story, Mister McGregor in this version is a twenty something year old guy who is the. What is it? Great, great nephew yeah. of the original Mr. McGregor. So it's not as creepy as it sounds. So yeah, this film. I saw the trailer, and it's Sony Animation Pictures. You know how awful the year they had last year with Smurfs, the Emoji Movie, <laughs> and uh, the Star. Yeah, this I've lo- I've almost lost all my faith oh, in this company. Christmas one, didn't it? Wasn't it? The yeah, star? I haven't seen the I, I, no, haven't, I, I haven't seen the Star. No, I didn't see that one either. Yeah, but it's not like trashed by the critics, so I'm, okay. I'm happy. I'm happy about that at least. But yeah, I've just lost a lot of faith in over the years, and I was not. I was expecting this. We came to this movie just to. Te- we our idea was just see it, just to see how bad it is. We can make this video for you guys, just tearing it apart. But after seeing it, it's not like it's not that. It's not that bad. Like I can't say I hate this film. I'm kind of happy I can say that. Let's just say, get your uh, suspension of disbelief ready, because there's a lot of disbelief that needs suspending. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. rabbits don't climb. Badgers. They don't talk. They don't wear clothes. Yeah. The Eura- Eurasian badgers, no, honey badgers are omnivorous, but Eurasian badgers, oh. as far as I know, only eat meat, and the badger oh. in this movie eats a lot of fruits. Okay. And let me put it this way. Um... I may have been more sympathetic to the plight of the rabbits if I hadn't had as many pests to deal with as I've had. Because basically in this movie, these cute little things are pests, plain and simple. I mean, they're eating the garden. They're eating the garden and the gardener out of house and home. I mean, it's really not cute. I, I don't know. Maybe that makes me a terrible person, but I don't find that cute that they're destroying this person's livelihood and just being a general nuisance. Yeah, and the villain is, like, Mr. McGregor. I'm just like, just from the get-go, I hate this Remember, guy. T- mid-20s guy. So, yeah. not not the just, old pudgy man you're used to. Yeah, just from the get-go, I'm just like, this guy's a jerk. Like, he gets fired from his job very understandably. And, like, he just does all these, like, really stupid things. And, like, this film's humor is, it's way too long on slapstick. There's way too much slapstick. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and honestly, like, the Peter Rabbit book, it's just, like, there's so little to go off of. So I can understand why they had all this stuff, but it just yeah. didn't, it didn't make, like, a funny movie. Like, uh, people in the theater were laughing, so, hey, like, if humor is personal. I have a very particular sense of what makes me laugh and what doesn't. And, yeah, both kids and adults, like, in the theater thought parts of this film were funny. Like, I, I, told, uh, I told some of the jokes from Scott Pilgrim vs. the World to my dad, and he was just like... Not, not not at all funny. I said, well, it is kind of the quintessential millennial movie, so... But yeah, we're I starting to review yet. another movie. So, um, yeah, if you want to... If you want to film an adaptation of Beatrix Potter, there was a, a, a kind of biographical film about her life. It came out, I think, you know, or first decade of the 2000s. I saw it in my... Uh, I saw it in my uh, 12th grade English class, so... You know, I'm... Yeah, so... If you want a movie, definitely watch that one and not this one because it just plays very fast and loose. Okay, okay. Now, now to, to go with something I like. I do like how they said it in, in England. Yeah. And that... it was clearly England's. Like, it wasn't just 
oh, this farm could be anywhere. No, no, no. They made it very clear. This is England. This is... Yeah, there's yeah. a notable amount of movie take less in London. Yeah, yeah. And, like, you know, all the, all the uh, car steering wheels are on the right side of the car, so that's a nice detail. And just... Um, I don't know. This is this may be a little bit of a nitpick, but they did showcase a lot of the diversity that is current in England today. So that that was good. I mean, it's not a anywhere movie. This is set in a specific yeah. place, you know, in our modern day. And yeah, it's just this film probably would have been worse if it took place somewhere else. Yeah, and again, just I guess yeah, the villain, the villain uh, Thomas Thomas McGregor. That's his name. Yeah, Thomas McGregor. <sighs> I have way too much sympathy for him. Like, I do not... You know, he wants to keep vermin out of his... Out of his property so he can sell it in order to raise money for a toy store. I mean, I don't know. That seems like a very noble and good goal to me. And then at the end... Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Skip ahead to this time if you don't want any spoilers. At the end, he kind of just slushes his life down the toilet because of rabbits and... This one girl who, yeah, it's it's just the whole thing that you see in a lot of movies. It's like, oh, you know, they're gonna get together, but it takes a while, and it's just yeah. It's long. This film's it's had tedious. a is a very it has a lot of seen it before feel too. Like they keep repeating the same so jokes. Weird. Like there's just I don't know if you saw, but there's a rooster in this movie, and like he like the first joke he makes about waking up and going, like, oh, I never seen this song before. Come to this is so cool like yeah that was funny at first but they did it like three or four times and then he finds out he has kids and then he wants to just fly away not deal with them just like "Eh, okay sorry uh, I I don't find that funny personally like I don't eh, okay (sighs) just yeah this film I mean it's like what you expect like a a chill like source material and like targeted towards kids what's up Dorn Um, targeted towards kids right and then they tried to turn into a movie. But, oh, there's not enough to go off of, so we got to add all this stuff to this film. Like, this film doesn't even feel like an adaptation of Peter Rabbit. It feels like the backstory of the creating of Peter Rabbit. Because this film has a big emphasis on how uh, Mrs. Potter, played by Rose Byrne, like, loves to paint and, you know, be an artist. And so it felt like more like a prelude to Peter Rabbit with just the actual Peter Rabbit being thrown in there. Yeah, I mean... The the tagline is I think Rascal Rebel Rabbit. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of all you need to know. Rascal it's like, Rabbit. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. It's just like they're going for kind of a you know fake edgy vibe, and it's just it doesn't work. Oh yeah, there's, there's a really soundtrack in this work. film. I, yeah. The average film, like I can remember a few movies like Suicide Squad had a lot of pop, had a lot of popular songs. Um, oh, jeez. Well, geez. Uh, a lot of, well like, Heathens was actually written for that movie. So yes, but there were plenty of other hardly songs. Hardly faulted, yeah. Yeah, and also this film, like, the soundtrack, a lot of popular songs. They did, like, this weird cover of uh, yeah. Rather Be from Clean Band. Like, it was... Oh, oh, and then um, Remember the Name from Fort Minor. Remember that song? Yeah. yeah. I, I was thinking, this is how far they've fallen. Because, I mean, okay, I haven't heard of that song much recently. It seems to be, like, a more... You know, mid like kind of 2009, 2010, 2011 thing. I mean, what, what do you think, Vitas? Has, has that have you heard that song around recently? No. Okay, remember the name Fort Minor? No. Fort Minor. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Okay, you you, you don't. Do you even know that song? Uh, no, I'm not. Yeah. I, like, I don't we really. have it here, folks. He doesn't know that song, so it's like, yeah, that's not really current. It's just. Like, they're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel. I, I, okay, I don't want to make too many assumptions. It just doesn't work. That song in a kid's movie, and then what the words adapted to be about rabbit. Uh, yeah, it rabbits. It's it just, a lot of stuff in this film just doesn't work. Yeah, it's so, phoned in. So, okay, Peter Rabbit, again. Didn't hate it. I was just bothered by a lot of things. So, I'm going to go for a 4 out of 10 stars. Like, Mark, it's a 0 to 10 scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a 0 out of 10 would be like, you absolutely hate it. Yeah. It has no redeeming qualities. Okay. Everything I, about I it is just heinous. A 5 out of 10 would be like, eh, it's okay. Yeah. And a 10 out of 10 would be like, it's amazing. There's no legit problem with it. And the film is just, mwah, masterpiece. Like, a 4 out of 10, if you want some reference, would be like, yeah. again, didn't hate it. Just yeah, don't I'm see not, myself remember it. I'm going to give it, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely forgettable. It's very forgettable. I'd give it a I'd give it a th- probably a three out of ten. I All just right. I I don't really have much to say to it. It's just it, yeah. Again, it's you've seen everything here before. Just everything as everything is everything. So 
Yeah, and again, it's it's definitely better than the Emoji Movie. <laughs> I don't know, that's see that one. Yeah, it's good. Well, okay. um, it's definitely better than those films and the Smurfs films that Sony Animation Pictures has had. But yeah, it just wasn't really. It. Fun fact though, the Smurfs film, um, there was a town in Spain that the whoever made the Smurfs film used painted they painted it completely blue in order to advertise for the Smurfs movie. Oh, and yeah. the locals kept it all blue afterwards. Um, the town's called uh, Jucar, I think, Jucar. And basically that has saved the town's economy because now it's like the Smurf capital of the world. So, nice. you know, there's some good to come to that, yeah. All right. They're called, uh, they're called Bitufos in Spanish, in case you were wondering. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, please. And don't forget to jiggle Mark's cheeks by, subs <laughs> by subscribing. All right. See you later.